obviously that's not the case, but but at least it gives you a bit of a cross section. I think it's fair and a balanced point of view, and I think that's what's important on the view is having that. <clears throat> and you know, it also will will. Um, I don't I don't know how how well it will work in terms of its. Uh, volatility because the show has always been more li- liberally slanted because Barbara Walters is and was liberal. Um, even though she wouldn't admit it for a long time because she's trying to be, you know, um, objective as an, as a, as a journalist. But now that she's retired, she's, she's really let the cat out of the bag for the most part. But, um, I'm not really sure how much uh, crosstalk and how much, you know, the di- diversiveness uh, will have in thought because, uh, it, you know, Rosie O'Donnell and Rosie Perez and Whoopi Goldberg are all very liberal and liberal people. <laughs> and then you have the one conservative viewpoint on there as well. Um, but maybe she can hold her own. I don't know what this woman's like. I've seen her a couple of times, but she seems okay. She doesn't seem like she's an idiot or bobblehead, like fucking Elizabeth Hasselbeck, who was a fucking moron. I mean, I never liked her. I shouldn't say she's a moron. She's really not stupid so much as she's just annoying and, and I couldn't stand her. <laughs> but in most, most people, you know, in my kind of, uh, you know, segment of society feel the same way. She was really annoying and we couldn't really stand the fucking bitch. So fortunately she left anyway. Um, but anyway, so be sure to check out the view. Uh, it starts back on Monday, actually, uh, on, um, ABC. I'm certainly gonna be watching it. I can't wait to see it. So we'll see what happens. um, the uh what was the thing I was talking about? Um hold on, let's get my notes here. Um Oh uh J- you know, Jared Leto, by the way. I was speaking well, first of all, I'll forget to that. Um Wanda Sykes is coming to Dallas in November. I bought tickets uh for my husband and I and a friend to go see her in November. So I'm I'm gonna be excited to see her. She's awesome too. I like her a lot and I'm really proud of her for coming out as a lesbian finally a few years ago and and just being herself. But you know, being gay and being a lesbian, I should say, and being black is got is is very, very difficult. Um I've talked about this before, I'll briefly re- gonna re- reiterate it, but you know, being black uh, and being gay is much harder than being Caucasian and being gay. It's just much more difficult because of the cultural uh, ramifications of it. Um, being a black lesbian is difficult. And it's amazing that she came out and, and is dealing with it anyway. Um, you know, mostly because most black people are very, very religious and, and Southern Baptist usually and, and whatever. So being gay as well is not, and being gay is seen as sinful, not only that, but also just completely unacceptable. Um, and my father who is black and my mom is white, you know, my dad's side is extremely anti-gay and homophobic and he is no exception. Um, and so, you know, that's one reason I'm not close to him is because he doesn't accept me for being gay and uh, for being myself rather. <clears throat> Whereas my mom's side of the family, you know, didn't accept it either. They didn't like it or like the fact that I was gay and they were all very religious and stuff. But she herself was very accepting and my grandmother was accepting and loved me and whatever. And segments of my family, you know, my, I was close to my aunts and stuff. A couple of my aunts were very accepting and fine with it. But, um, you know, when it comes to religion, religion it fucks up families so badly and fucks up people's lives. That's why I'm not religious. I mean, religion is... Oh God, here we go. I'm getting on religion now. Before I do, let me tell you something that happened. I made an appointment. I've been having these headaches for a while, probably six months or so. And I had this lump on the back of my head, or neck, rather, the base of my skull, top of my neck on the left side. It's a hard lump. And I went to the I went to several doctors about it. And you know, first I went to a... Um, to a regular doctor and he sent me to you. He said, he said, it's not, it's not a lipoma. It's something else. So go see a, uh, dermatologist. So I went to the dermatologist, the dermatologist said, yeah, you need to go see an ENT. So I went to an ENT, ENT said, well, let's give you some, uh, augmentin, which is a strong, powerful, uh, antibiotic. So he did. And the lump went away, but then it came back probably, you know, two weeks after that. And so it's a hard lump. And so a lot of the pain I've been having is radiating in my head is radiating from that lump all the way into my brain. And so I don't know if it's a tumor or, or if I'm going to be dying soon or, or what, what it is, but something's going on. And um, so I've been worried about it and I wanted to get it checked down. So anyway, my point is I went to um, 
I changed insurance plans last year and I'd, I've been going to specialists for everything the past year and I haven't been going to see a primary care physician uh, since January. Um, so I had to pick a new primary care physician because he's not on my new plan. So um, I looked and looked and looked and found somebody I thought would be good and uh, I had scheduled an appointment for this coming Tuesday to go see him about this issue. Maybe get an MRI, you know, set that kind of thing up, whatever, just to make sure it's nothing. And um, so I uh, set it up and had the appointment ready, whatever. And, and the other day, yesterday, I was looking online, I was researching him because I didn't really know much about him. He's just on my list and I kind of looked him up briefly and then called their office uh, last week to set it up or a few weeks ago. And I was looking it up and in his on his webpage, um, it says, um, there's only one doctor and uh, I praise his name and uh, he is the one and only doctor and everything I do is in the name of the Lord, my Jesus Christ, my faith in the Lord, blah, 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 whatever the bullshit he said. And I was like, oh my God, it's a fucking evangelical Christian. Now, is it acceptable to say I'm not going to go see a fucking evangelical Christian doctor because I don't agree with evangelical Christian the belief system. Is that bigotry? Maybe, yeah. It probably is bigoted because I'm I'm making an assumption of who and what he thinks based on his religion. However, it's based also on experience. And most gay people can attest to this, or gay people or, or, or racial minorities or whatever the case may be, that, you know, they've had a significant amount of negative experiences with people who are uh, evangelical Christians, especially gay people. So the reason I don't want to go see an evangelical Christian is not because he's a Christian, it's because he's an evangelical Christian, because the majority of people in America are Christian. Um, so it's not like it's because he's a Christian. I mean, most doctors I'm going to go to see are probably Christian anyway. Uh, the, the problem is that he's an evangelical Christian, and those types of Christians are the worst because they, in my opinion, are fucking crazy, and they're nuts, and they really are um, scary. And I'm not putting my life in the hands of somebody that thinks I'm evil or, or wrong or disgusting or whatever the case may be. You really think I'm going to put my life in the hands of someone like that? No. I mean, if someone like that is, is, is crazy enough to believe what they believe, they're crazy and think how they think and to be as bigoted and as racist or whatever, homophobic, whatever they may be, then they're certainly uh, crazy enough to put rice in, just <laughs> in my prescription or something so I can die to quote unquote kill the evil uh, in me, which would be the gayness or whatever, according to their Bible or whatever. So, you know, me being an agnostic, uh, gay, biracial, liberal, loudmouth is not really something that's well suited for someone uh, like that <laughs> as my doctor. And I'm not saying that he would do anything consciously necessarily, but subconsciously, I don't think I would get the best care. And it's difficult to discuss, you know, gay things. Like if I had some sort of sexual thing come up or something, or, or wanted to talk about, or I don't know, whatever it might be, or I don't know, you know, you want to talk about gay stuff, you know, you have a gay relationship or, or gay sex or something like that. You don't want to talk about it with someone like that. So I, that's why I'm not going to go see him. So my point is I'm, I'm going to call them on Monday and cancel my appointment and tell them exactly why. <laughs> I'm going to tell them exactly why I'm not coming in to see them and not coming into their uh, their little establishment is because they are racist, homophobic assholes. And um, I'm not interested in being a, a, a guinea pig for them. Uh, so, I, you know, a lot of people may think that's wrong or whatever, but I don't give a fuck what people think about it because it is – the reality of my life, uh, being who and what I am all of my life. Those are just the types of things that you have to think about. And when you're gay, unfortunately, these are the types of things you have to consider. You can't just go anywhere to anybody for anything like a heterosexual, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant male could, or female in a lot of cases as well. Um, you, you have to think about your surroundings, the type of person you're dealing with, whether it's your health or, you know, a healthcare provider or a professor or a teacher or a, a law enforcement person or whatever. The, I mean, I don't know if every gay person considers these things when they're dealing with these types of individuals or people in authority or, or whatever. I do um, because I 
don't trust people enough to just say, you know, oh, I trust you because you're a doctor or because you're a cop or because you're a judge or because you're this and that. No, I don't trust anybody just because you have to earn my trust. <laughs> I don't care who and what you are. Just because you have a fucking badge or a diploma doesn't make me trust you. You have to actually earn it. And so by being somebody whom is aligned with a group of people that are, you know, um, historically racist, historically bigoted and, and hate filled towards gays, lesbians, transgendered people, bisexuals too, um, and uh, towards people of different races and people who are non Christian. Mm, I think I'm going to hedge my bets on that one. <laughs> so, anyway. I wanted to get into that. But getting into the religion thing I was talking about earlier, though, is and the reason that it irritates me so badly, you know, religion is unfortunately, in my opinion, a poison on society. Um, and people will say, oh, there's a lot of great things about religion. Yeah, there can be great things about religion, of course. There's good things about probably Satan, too, if Satan existed. <laughs> Satan's probably a big party guy and loves to have fun. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> but whatever the case, just because something has a good side or has good elements or qualities to it doesn't make it good, inherently good. Um, religion in and of itself, in my opinion, is an evil on society. It is a way to control people. It is a way to brainwash people. It is a way to make people, um, keep people in line and to keep them giving money and to do certain things and to think a certain way. It's based on tradition and people who are traditionalists or conservatives or whatever, those people irk me to death because I've never been that way. Even as a kid, I mean, I just, I'm naturally a liberally minded person. I feel, you know, tradition has its place or good things. You know, it's good to have traditions within your family, things that you do that your family did before you, whatever, that's fine. But to think about things in a way simply because it's in a book or it was told to you by someone else that this is the way things are is, is ludicrous to me and to not be a thinker, a critical thinker irritates the fuck out of me. If I run into somebody who doesn't use their fucking brain and instead of thinking about religion from a historical, a historical perspective, and from a rational perspective and thinking about it just based on what they're told and quote unquote faith, which is such bullshit, you know, people who are religious are often say, often say, oh, well, you know, you don't understand because you're not of the faith. You have to have faith and being, being, you know, Christian or whatever means you have to have faith that, that God's word is true and that when you die, this happens, blah, blah, blah. Fuck that shit. I don't fucking think so. You know, religion is just about control. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm sorry. That's it. Now, does that mean you can't be a spiritual person? No, you can be a spiritual person and believe in a higher power, higher, higher being other than yourself, whatever, if you want to, if you choose to believe in that. Um, without having religion, without having mind control, you can come to conclusions on your own without having someone else tell you what to think. And anytime you go to a church, you're sitting in a pew listening to a pastor or a priest or whatever officiant you're listening to, tell you how to think based on a book or based on dogma or whatever, then you're not using critical thinking. You're just listening and you're a fucking blind sheep. So I have little, little to no respect for people who are highly religious. I just don't. And there are people in my family who are like that. And that's why I detest them in a lot of ways. I just look at them with disgust, not because they are, they are religious, but because they use their religion as a weapon and their religion as their self-righteous and all that bullshit. And, and that is just disgusts me. Um, so I'm not going to go on and on about religion. I just wanted to say that because I feel like people um, don't always understand that gay people, gay men in particular have to think about the kind of people we deal with, you know, in society every day being gay uh, whether we let whether we let it know be known or not up, up front, ultimately, if you're dealing with someone on a continual basis, it's going to come out, and um, it doesn't make any sense to go back in the closet to, to make someone else more comfortable. So, anyway, I'm not going to be going to that doctor. Um, so what else? Oh, um, some break. What am I? I can't read my writing. Hollywood. 
Oh, yeah, there was this teen. Right, speaking of religion, there was this teen um, who, he was like, I guess he's like 17 or 16 or 17 when he did this. He There was a statue on the side of a road in Ohio or Pennsylvania or somewhere, and it was the statue of Jesus Christ. 